Good morning people, it's Monday, as you might expect, the, uh, the paint is nicely dried and so the first thing I'm going to do is to put this tyre on and drop it back down to the, uh, drop it back down to the floor and uh, then see about maybe getting it outside and giving it a power wash. Uh, I rang the bloke over the weekend, he couldn't come this weekend, but uh, he's uh, he's interested, so we're going to carry on with that. Uh, I wonder how many people uh, understand how these tyres work, and, uh, and how you fit them. Uh, you'll see, in the middle of the tyre here, you've got this well, right? That well enables you to put the tyre half on, drop the bead into that well and then squeeze the other half around the rim at the bottom. Uh, then you fit the tube, put the tube uh, into the hole there and put a screw in uh, thread cleaner into it so that it can't escape again. Then fit the tube so that the tube is down into the well there and then put this second half of the tyre on so that you don't nip the tube <laughs> like I did on the little tractor when you're putting it back on. Uh, again, to, in order to get the tyre over the bead at the bottom, you have to get the tyre bead into the well at the top, uh, and that's how it works. Basically, the the diagonal measurement from there to there, to the outer side of there, is the, is the same as the diameter of the inside of the tyre. So, I'm not going to try and film me putting that on, because it's going to be a bit of a rive. Uh, but I'll bring you back when it's on. Just one other thing. One of Phil's top tips. When you're painting and you come to the point where you clean your brushes, get yourself a jam jar or a big jar, put your solvent in there, dip your brushes in your solvent and clean them and dry them and then put them in a tub upside down and put the lid on your jar. That way you save masses and masses of solvent and uh, your brushes don't end up with crushed bristles and bent over at 45 degrees from sitting in the bottom of a, a jar of evaporated and hardened solvent. So there you go, there's a little tip for you. Right, I'm going to put this tyre on, put the tractor back on the deck and then I'm going to crack on with making the uh, bender stand. So I'm going to do that now and I'll bring you back in a minute. Oh look, it's a 2CV tractor. Back on that soon. Bye for now. Right folks, here we are. Tyre's half on. I've, uh, I've got the tube. I've got the valve in position. Can you actually see that there? It's in a flight there. I'm just spinning around and twisting the rivers. Maybe I'll get some more light. I've got the valve in position here with a... Uh, a valve tool screwed into it so that it can't escape basically and once you've done that you move the valve around to the top of the wheel and you tuck the tube in to the well all the way around the rest uh, then you check it in and then you soap inside the tyre on the inside of not on the bead out not on the outside bead that won't do any good you soap on the inside of the tyre like that so that the, t the bead slips over the rim and it really is not difficult to do if you get it right okay I'm going to put this tube in and then I'll show you again uh, in the meantime I'll try and get a bit more light here make it better okay bye now right folks this is better we have light now so that's what I've done there, I've uh, threaded the valve through which is a bit of a handful, you have to stretch the tyre when you get it on the first one, you stretch the tyre so that it opens out a bit and I've put that valve tool into there to stop it slipping out. And the next thing you've got to do is put the tube in all the way around and uh, get it nicely into the well so that it's out of the way. Uh, when I just squeeze the other side of the tire and so it doesn't get trapped underneath the bead, that's the main thing. Right, I'm going to do that now and I'll bring you back. Okay, bye now. 
Right, chaps. I've said chaps again. Never mind. Monday, 4.30. What have we got done? Here we have a bender. Clamped to the uh, side of the table. Or at least restrict. It's not actually clamped to the side of the table. That uh, set of moulds is just stopping it slipping off. It's sat on its three legs. And its three legs have been squared up to the floor. So the next thing to do is to work out the distance between them and weld some struts on. And what I'm planning on is three struts near the top and three struts near the bottom. And I might just I might see what I've got in casters and put some casters on it so it'll roll around. I've got those great big cast iron ones there. But I think they're probably too big. I think they're probably far too big, so I'm not putting them on. But I'll see what else I've got. I have a feeling I've got a set of three somewhere, but I'm not sure they're well I know where they are, they're downstairs in the stores. Right, so that's done. I've uh, made a little uh, cup for that foot to sit in and uh, it's coming together so what else have we got done today we found we found that the little Linisher bought a well known either Leedle or Aldi I'm not sure which one this is a hang on this is a Pro so probably oldie. We found that the belts can be cut off these because these are the right length. These are belts off floor sanders, the old floor sander belts. I've got quite a lot of them in various uh, various types of grit, various different numbers, grit numbers. So I just cut a one inch piece off there and hey presto, there you go. So if you look at that, there's probably going to be at least six or seven belts in there. I have ordered some belts, but they're coming from China and they may be crap because they're cheap. So I know I can use this on them. So that's really good, really useful to know. Cut it with a pair of scissors. Slight, push the standing knife through from the inside and then pencil around it and cut it with a pair of scissors. As you can see, my scissor cutting is not perfect, but never mind. What else? Tractor sat on new tyres. Tractor sat on new tyres. Doesn't that look good? Doesn't that look good, eh? I'll just put my uh, photographic lighting on. There you are. Tractor sat on new tyres. Oddly, this this rim is in the best condition of the two, uh, paint-wise, but it was rusty inside. So there you go. Uh, the other room, which is uh, in quite poor condition externally, although it's, uh, let's face it, it's, I assume they're either cast steel or malleable castings. Uh, that, that has still the orange paint inside, so there you go. So that job that I thought could be a bit tricky has turned out to be a piece of piss, really. Or should I say very easy. Right, so I think I'm going to call that it for today. Uh, it's gone rather well apart from a little bit of uh, thumb damage which was uh, a double whammy. I slid something down and, and caught it there and it started to bleed but then stopped and then I got the uh, I've got over here I've got a a leg vise bodged onto a bodged onto a bench of sorts just so that I could use it quickly and it sort of stayed there and it really wasn't sitting up properly but I turned this over and that fell like that horribly and trapped my thumb so there you go I did swear so it's alright it'll be alright because I swore at it uh, now I just check out ton welder off no that's on that's off and the gas is off and I shall go and do my bedtime routine now and then go home for some tea. Right chaps, there she is, balanced on her pins. 
I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye now. Good morning, people. Tuesday. The tyre stayed up. So we've got two new tyres on. I forgot to turn the battery charger off last night. Which means I've got a fully charged battery, which is good. Uh, and I'm just working out the distance between these legs. Which is not easy, but I'm getting there. So what I've decided to do is to weld this end up first, a top leg and a bottom leg. Uh, and then put it back on. And then I know those two legs can't move independently and they're vertical and then I'll get the third leg lined up to these two and get another measurement off there so I'm going to proceed a pace with that I've tidied up my metal store and found some potential pieces I don't know what that bit's doing there but I've found potential pieces for the uh, for the struts so I've had a bit of a sweep up in here as well because it was a bit of a mess and I, I just get carried away and tidy up and sort stuff out and Every day and every way we get better and better. So I'm going to crack on with that. And when I've done it, I'll bring you back. And uh, we'll show you a finished frame at this end. Bye now. Right, folks, there we are. All welded up. It's 20 past one. I've been effing about in my usual effing about fashion. But that's nice and square and flat. And you can put a, a square on it. And for what it matters, I know it doesn't matter, but... I prefer things to stand straight and not wobble. Uh, look, I've been using precision instruments. Uh, I actually slackened that off and set it accurately with the engineer's square before I started using it. So there. Right, so now we're going to cut some, we're going to get a, a solid measurement from that point over there to this point here and uh, cut another two pieces of box section and two pieces of tube. I've put the box section at the bottom so we can put a shelf on there. Uh, it's easier than putting a piece of, uh, then mounting it on tube. Uh, the tube is just, is just literally scrap water pipe that I've got from somewhere or other. Uh, but that'll, that'll do the job and uh, that'll clean up nicely. So I'll get that set up and measured up and the stuff cut and the steel welded in. But first, I'm going to have a cup of tea. Okay. Super Max Arc. Bring you back later. Bye now. Here we go, people. Two o'clock and it's coming together. We've got some very old scabby, rusty steel for this job. But at the end of the day, you use up the crap first, don't you? Get rid of the rubbish out of your life. You're keeping steel. Keep the good stuff. So you get rid of the rubbish. Just a little setup tip there. G clamp, two bits of flat metal, old bits of scrap, holds the two level. Right, because I'm going to put a shelf on the bottom for all the uh, all the formers to go on. Right, on we go. Another tack weld time. Bye for now. And here we go, folks. Just gone three o'clock. The cup of tea is still going down well. And there she is. It's a bit more than tacked together, it's, uh, I've just got to go over and uh, turn it over and do some more welds. And then I've got to uh, put a strut from the middle there to back here somewhere just to support that boss there. Can you see that boss under there? Yes you can. That one's supporting as well because it supports this joint so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go belt and braces as usual. And then I shall... Uh, Clean it all up and let it have some paint. There you go. So what I'm going to do next is take the uh, take the bender off, put the bender on the floor on blocks, uh, and then put the frame on it upside down and uh, and fit that. And then I shall take the bender off completely, go over over all the welds and just uh, finish the welds where there's no weld on, i.e. the underneath bits. Right, okay, I'll bring you back later when I'm doing that, or when I've done it. Bye now. There she is, folks. Upside down, levelled. On blocks. And ready for... a support bar for that middle one. 
What I might think I might do actually is just go straight across there and then put a tube in. Uh, maybe with a piece of round tube with a slight upward bend in it just to give it a bit of nip. I don't know. Maybe you just want it. Maybe I'm trying to be too clever. As usual. Nah, nah. We'll just do it. We'll just do it. We can always shim it if it doesn't support it. I think I'll start with a piece of uh, of that round bar, that flat bar, bent into a circle again, to fit round there, and we'll go from there and see how we can do. All right then. Catch you later. Back in a bit. Here we are, folks. Close to five, and it's done. That's it. The only thing I have to decide is. Should I put casters on it? And I think what I might do, because I thought I had a set of three casters, new casters, and unfortunately I haven't, I've only got two. But what I thought I could do was put two casters on these two ends and then put a foot on the back so that it can be lifted at the back and pushed. But when you let that foot down, it's solid on the floor and it won't roll about. If I put three casters on, I think it's going to be rolling all over the place. I don't know yet. That's uh, that's a job for tomorrow. But uh, what I should be doing tomorrow is uh, bazzing the rust off it and welding it up. Finish welding it up. But I think, I think I've done all this. I've welded all this side. That's all welded. Yeah, that's all welded. All those are welded, so it's just really to uh, to finish some of the welds. But as you can see, there it is. There it is. Just got to finish these top welds, and then we can. Uh, De-rust it and paint it. Give it a scut of red lead and then probably maybe some maybe do it in black or maybe do it in green, I'm not sure. Do it in my traditional workshop green metallic. No, I think I'll just brush paint it in black. Brush paint it in black rust proof. That'll be enough. Oh shelf, I've got to put a shelf in. I want uh Oh look, that's triangular but it won't fit. No, well it would but it's, it's, it's too thin, it's too thin. But I'm sure I've got some, I've got some bits of, all sorts of bits of steel. Uh, and I might also have some aluminium checker plate which will fit that which would look rather nice but I'm running a bit low on that I think. Anyway, I can't, I can't, just can't see it at the moment. Just can't see it at the moment. But I'll have a look tomorrow. Anyway, there we go. It's home time, and it's more or less finished. So I think what I'll do now is tidy up some of the bloody mess I've made. Uh, as you can see, there's a few, there's a few more welds to to finish off work, and I can now get to them. But uh, I think you'll agree that's come out rather well. And I've used up a load of rusty old scrap, really. I mean, the, the water pipe was, is the best, the best metal on it. Uh, the box section's fairly heavily pitted, uh, but it'll, it, it's all right. It's there, and it's used up. That's the thing. It's used up on Somerton now. And uh, the box section I've got left now is actually good stuff. So I like using all the crap up. This is these bits that I've rolled around here are uh, ceiling bars off door frames, ceiling bars off wooden door frames. That's what your door shuts against. Uh, they come in various thicknesses. They're heavily galvanised, so you have to grind the galva off before you weld them. But very useful metal, very useful strip. We used to call it mass hooping, and it got that got corrupted to mass hooping, right? Uh, but we, call, we called it mast hooping because we used to bend it uh, round telegraph poles and masts to make clamps. 
uh, to to fasten wires to them and uh, to fasten overheads brackets and cables and stuff like that. There you go. Right, I'm going to have a sweep up, a tidy up, and I'm going to bugger off home some tea. I'll catch you tomorrow, which is Wednesday. Bye for now, folks. That's it, folks. Five o'clock. Had a quick tidy up and a sweep round, got all the dust out and the crap. Nice clean workshop. And there it is, finished. I shall finish welding it tomorrow and do the rest. Okay, see you all tomorrow. Bye now. Good morning people, it's Wednesday and looking through my metal collection I spotted two caster plates hiding in this piece of metal so that's drilled and now it's about to be cut out with a zip disc and welded to the bottoms of the tubes uh, much easier to drill a big piece of metal rather than try and drill a small piece of metal there you go top tip for today right I finished the welding on the stand uh, my welding's fairly atrocious as anybody will tell you like people like Dinglezilla look him up he's good uh, welding once you've got the basics right it's just practice and the more you practice, the better you get. Now, I'll go for months without doing any welding. And then I'll pick up a project and it'll be all welding. Just all cutting and welding to make something like this. And uh, to be honest, my welding starts off really, really bad and really, really rusty. But after a few days practice, I can honestly say it's barely adequate. So there you go, you do improve, you do get better. Right, I'll cut these bits out and I'll bring you back. Oh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a caster. Oh, hang on there. Yeah, I don't suppose it makes any difference. I'm going to put a, a caster on the two, we'll call them the front legs, because that's where the pipe goes in. I'll put a caster on each on the front legs, and I'm going to just tack a piece of longer tube on to bring it back to level at the back so that when you want to move it all you've got to do is lift it up at the back and push but when you sit it down it's got that rigidity where it won't wobble about okay i'll bring you back when i've done this bye now now here's the thing people basically it's a bit of junk it's from aldi or somewhere like that it's a pro tool but it works and it makes me realise how much I need a linisher in this workshop. Like linisher, like a vertical sanding belt or belt sander, I call it what you want. I call them a linisher because that's what sort of industry calls them. But for cleaning up stuff like that, you know, taking the sharp edges off, taking the burrs off, rounding the corners, bloody ideal. Right, and I don't know if I showed you this, but I found these belts. These belts are old uh, floor sander belts. As you can see they've been used and they're the same length so you just cut an inch wide strip off there and it fits on there so that's sorted but i'm gonna have to make a big linisher or buy a big linisher because what a tool you know so useful i've got the basics over there i think i've got a nice pillar with a big three-phase motor on it and a big bearing at the top and i think with a bit of modification i might get a linisher out of that but I'm not sure yet, I'm not sure. That was a bit of bit of stuff that was turfed out at somebody's workshop and given to me. It was a matter of, do you want it? And I said, yeah, yeah, it's useful. Bloody tech it. Get it out of my sight, you know, and that was it, and I got it. But uh, there you go. Right, I'm gonna crack on, get these paint cleaned off these and get them welded on. Uh, of course, they're gonna have to be welded on. Uh, in a straight line in, in relation to each other so that they don't crab when you push them forward. There must be a trick to doing that, but I don't actually know what it is, so there you go. Okay, see you in a bit. There we go, people. I've added the required length to the, uh, the third leg, if you like, which is uh, the height of the caster plus the thickness of the plate. I've done the obvious and just put a long axle through both uh, cast a pivot points which should get me square enough 
and uh, I'm ready to tack it. So there you go. Right, I'm going to tack it up. Bring you back when I've done it. There she is, folks. All day rusted and ready for a lick of paint, which is exactly what it's going to get immediately after I've had a cup of tea. So there you go. Beautiful, isn't it? It's Frankenstein's monster. Or the equivalent of it. Right, I'm going to paint it. I'm going to have a cup of tea. I'm going to paint it. I'll bring you back and show you when it's in its first coat of red lead, I think. And then uh, I'll probably give it a coat of, a coat of black. Or I may even brush on some metallic green. I'm not sure yet. Oh, just let me, just let me think on. No, I shall... Uh, uh, yeah, I shall paint it before I put the uh, the shelf on because uh, the shelf may well be aluminium. Oh, it may it may well be. Hmm. Let me just have a think about that. I'm thinking of a way of storing these underneath it. Now, as you can see, I've got three that size and three that size. Well, these are foreigners really, but I can make an adapter to make them fit. They're the genuine tubular oblique staffer or staffer tubular ones. Right, I've got another one coming which will go, which will fill in the gap between inch and a quarter and two inch. Inch and a half is coming. Right, so it gives me, it gives me a fair range. I mean, they were cheap. I bought them because they were cheap. Uh, these are a bit more expensive but still not dear. Uh, they all fit, so I'm just thinking of a way of storing those. And I was thinking of just a bar welded across the middle, echoing the bar, the uh, echoing this bar here. A bar welded across there with some pieces of tube welded on it, and just drop them onto it. Uh, Which I suppose you could do, but I think a shelf is going to be better and more useful. See, you could you could actually put a shelf on there, but to what purpose? I don't know. I shall think about it anyway. Right, cup of tea time. Cup of tea time. Any ideas? Give me a shout. Bye now. There we go, people. It's all painted. It's all painted. Let's get you a decent look at it. There it is. That's that's a coat of red lead. I shall probably give it. Uh, I think I might give it brush it a coat of green actually, and do the same do the same on the pump as well. We'll see how it goes. Uh, I don't know. For now, I might just do the stand and uh, then get these pipes, get these exhaust pipes made, or at least have a go at bending some pipe because I've never done it before, and uh, there is nothing at all to say that I won't completely cock it up and wreck all the pipe. But there you go. Anyway, that's first coat of red lead on. Uh, I give it a severe grinding off on the. Some of this box section was more or less scrap. It should have been thrown away really, but it's used up now and it's it's gone. So there you go. Right, I'm having a cup of tea. It's four o'clock, I've had a visit from uh, a mate of mine who's going to uh, upgrade my burglar alarm system and put some cameras in so that I'm covered when uh, I'm not here. And uh, that should be happening fairly soon. Anything else to tell you? No, not really. I'll bring you back when there's something more interesting going on. Bye now. And there it is, folks. With its casters on. All nice and wheely about. And it's five o'clock home time. So I've just had a look at the pump. Just uh, whipped that top off and checked it. To see if there's any O-rings I could replace, but there isn't. So uh, I'm about to clean this up. Well, more or less finished in the patch and uh, give it a coat of paint I suppose 
and uh, bang it together and start using it. Uh, I'm not sure whether to paint this or not actually. I think I, I think it should really, because uh, it was originally painted. And bare metal, it just goes rusty. So I'll see. I'll decide tomorrow. All right, Thursday tomorrow. See you all. Bye for now. Look at that stand. Isn't that posh? Bye now. Good morning, people. It's Thursday. And I've had the paintbrush out again. There you are, it got light green. Don Double Boost wouldn't like it. But, uh, I must admit, I do prefer the lighter colours. It looks well anyway. It might need another coat uh, over red. It's, uh, it's cover it covers very well, this paint. And I also, oh, ouch, walked into the vice. Also did the angle plates as well because I had the brush in my hand and it doesn't really matter what colour they are. And really lighter colours are better because you get more light bouncing around the job and you can see what you're doing better. Whereas you're painting black and it immediately becomes a black hole that light falls into. Does to my eyes anyway. So there you go. They might need another coat but I think they'll be alright. Good paint this. It's, uh, it's a metallic. Uh, hammered finish and it's from Manor Paints bloody good stuff no connection other than being a very happy customer and it's not dear either uh, when you look at what you pay for Hammerite nowadays and Hammerite most certainly is not what it used to be it's uh, I think it's an Asco Noble brand now rather than being Finnegan's Paints of Prudhoe in Northumberland so there you go. Right, now I've got that done and that done, I'm going to have a little go at getting these two uh, rivets out and then I'm going to paint this. I'm either going to have to get those two rivets out or I'm going to have to re-drill the holes at the side of where they were and put it on slightly cocked. But there you go. They're very, they, these are probably, as you can probably, can you see the little hole there? Let me just see if you can see it. Yes, you can see the little hole there. You can see how small these uh, hammer rivets are, hammer screw rivets. So I'm going to have a crack at getting those two out because when I, my usual trick to get these off is to get a Stanley blade and very carefully tap it under the head of the rivet or under the head of the rivet and the plate. Uh, that it holds on and usually that is enough uh, just to, to, to loosen them I've got I've taken loads off and put them back on again and uh, with those they just snapped the head snapped off because they're so small I tried turning them I tried grinding uh, slotting them with a the Dremel and that didn't work uh, so there you go but I mean, I took all the plates off the Colchester when I was painting the Colchester and uh, put new rivets in them. And uh, as you can see, I mean, they went back on perfectly. Uh, oh, look at the uh, dried out cutting oil. Uh, they went back on perfectly and no complaints at all. In fact, I think I've re reused the original rivets because they came loose so easily. There you go. Right, I'm going to crack on now and do that and I'll bring you back when there's something more interesting to show you. Painting generally is boring. Uh, but there you go, it has to be done otherwise everything goes rusty. But I think that's come out quite alright really. That's going to look nice. I'm still thinking about how to uh, store the, uh, the formers underneath. Still thinking. Uh, something will come to me. Right. Catch you later. It was raining this morning, very nasty, but it's drying out now and the sun's come out, so there you go. Look at all those apples. Can you see those apples at the bottom of the drive? This is a perennial problem I have here. The apples fall out the apple tree, hit the concrete, roll straight down the drive and into the road. And you should just stress at what you can see. Actually, you can see apples at the other side of the road. Uh, <laughs> they get squashed all over the road every year. I pick them up every day, try and have a pick up every day and uh, turn them into rust remover, but that's another story. Uh, this yard has been troublesome. 
I have lost cars down it. I've had a car drag me down it. Uh, I once lost a Mark II Jaguar off, uh, off a suspended tour which went straight down and straight across the road and stopped just short of that uh, front door over there. I was dragged down the hill uh, down here by a Morris 1000 which uh, was jammed in gear and had no handbrake which I didn't realise and I knocked it out of gear and it took me off my feet and took me straight down the yard. But this is Langtoft for you. There is no flat ground in Langtoft. Everything's on a slope. Okay. Bring you back in a bit when I've got some more to show you. Bye now. It's a rig. <laughs> it's a rig to re-drill the holes in a slightly different place because I couldn't get those tiny little rivets out. Uh, and the job's done, so it's worked. But basically it's... Uh, it's a, I, I assumed immediately that I'd have a machine vice big enough to hold that, but I actually haven't. So uh, I've had to rig and pack and level and get it near enough and then get it bang on under the drill so that I wasn't drilling an extra hole in the bloody plate. And uh, like these uh, cowboy rigs very often do, it worked perfectly. 330 second hole, not very big. Okay folks, bring you back later, bye now. Right folks, Thursday and it's nearly home time. So what have we got done? We've got the pipe bender painted with re-drilled holes. We've got the handle painted. We've got the frame painted, finished. That's finished. That's finished, they've both got two coats on. I don't think that really needs another coat because it's got a coat of primer underneath, it's got a coat of red light underneath it. Uh, and we've, wisely or unwisely, painted that bit as well. Uh, that didn't go so well, the paint was like tar. And uh, what I'm going to do tomorrow is just shoot another coat on with a, uh, a spray gun. I'm going to... Uh, just take a brush to it again in a minute and uh, and flat it again. But I should have I should have thinned the paint and sprayed it really. It's uh, it's so much easier when you get a fabulous finish. Uh, pointless spraying things like that. If you try to spray that frame, you'd, you'd put more out in overspray than you'd ever get on the metal. Much better to brush something like that. And with a hammered finish, it doesn't matter anyway. It doesn't make any difference, or at least very little difference. I have sprayed that green hammered stuff and it is fabulous, it makes a really good job. But that's the sort of finish that's the sort of finish you can get with spraying. And the paint I'm using is Lidl's Baufix metal paint, which is as far as I can see exact equivalent of uh, of hammerite smooth right, but a lot cheaper. Uh, so there you go. Right folks, well I'm shortly going to I'm gonna brush that out. Those angle plates need another coat. I'm going to brush that out and I'm going to bugger off home for some tea. I suppose I could paint those as well, couldn't I? I might paint those tomorrow and then let it all dry over the weekend. That means you won't see a final assembly. Well, I might be able to get you a final assembly tomorrow. I don't know. Who knows? We'll see. Right, folks. I'll see you all tomorrow. What's Anything else happen? No? Okay. Bye for now. Good morning, people. Well, that's dried better than I thought it would. Uh, it looks half decent as that, so we'll leave that. This has still got a few tacky spots on it. As though there was oil on it, but I did thoroughly degrease it with thinners before I uh, before I painted it. So there you go, but it looks good. There's the, uh, the nice little stuff I managed to go on it. Like so. And uh, so what I'm going to do this morning, uh, I'm going to continue with the shelf for underneath it and look what arrived this morning, another one. So I've now got virtually a full set. We've got, uh, if I can get the right way around, half inch, three quarter, another three quarter, one inch, inch and a quarter, 
inch and a half and two inch this one needs boring out a couple of mil but uh, no big deal there I've got the machinery so there you go so I think we can set honestly say we've got a full set now and if we need any more uh, I said to look out from keep looking out from I need to make an adapter so that these fit onto a 35 mil nose so I need a piece of uh, a piece of tube or something that will fit over 35 mil to make an adapter but that's neither in or there uh, so I'm going to crack on with making this shelf uh, and I'll bring you back when I've got some metal found and cut out and I think what I'll do is just uh, put it onto the base and put some pop rivets into the into the box section and that'll do the job there you go right I'll bring you back later bye now well folks my search for a piece of metal turned into a massive tidy up because all the metal's all over the place so it isn't anymore it's all sorted out and I've had a massive tidy up and I'm ready now when it gets cold I'm ready to just light the boiler so it's been it's been worth it and I've found a piece of metal I've found a piece of metal, a piece of nice galvanised steel which will just fit nicely when it's cut down but there she is all together did I go over the top? of course I did I always do there you go it's going to be good and it's really easy to move around as well really easy to move around just pick it up at this end and boil it wherever you want it and then it sits down and it's solid so having been looking at people on YouTube bending pieces of tube there is a lot more to it than you would think and then of course there is tube and there is pipe the difference being tube is a structural element which is measured by its external diameter and its wall thickness whereas pipe is designed to carry either a fluid or a gas and is measured by its internal now I've found that this which I'm going to use for the exhaust pipe is an exact fit in that uh, former which means it is one inch so there you go, so I've got a former to bend it with I've got a former that fits the existing exhaust on the tractor there's still some tacky bits on that paintwork but I've got it put back together and I've got its nice little sign riveted back on in the re-drilled holes uh, so it's finished, I'm just going to now cut this tin and make this shelf that's going to make a lovely shelf right, I'm going to clear up a bit and get this get the guillotine out and get this piece cut so I'll bring you back when I've done that well there she is folks it's going on 4.30 and I've got the shelf on and uh, I think next week I need to uh, make the adapter for the blue uh, the blue form is there and I need to bore out the uh, inch and a half one uh, by about two mil just to fit the the nose of the ram and then we can have a go so there she is it looks well that's the second shelf I made I overcut the first one I had a piece of uh, a piece of metal that would have fitted perfectly and that somehow I over well no I overcut it because I didn't make a pattern because that one fits inside and because it fits inside I was able to put it in and just mark around it and it fits perfectly it just misses those corners really that's the piece I should have used in the first place because it's gone in a lot better and the fact that it doesn't quite cover the corners doesn't matter because it just avoids the welds right well that's the end of the week folks thanks for watching thanks for subscribing I've had a sudden upsurge in subscribers this week uh, well this month I've had uh, I know it won't sound many to, to most people but I've had uh, 16 
join this month. So thanks for subscribing all you guys. Uh, send me a like. Send me a hit. Uh, please subscribe. Share. Do anything you can think of. But oh, above all enjoy it. Uh, I've enjoyed this week. We've got something done this week. We've, we've, we've got something done we can see and we can look at. So there you go. Right Next week. Back on the tractor. Right. My daughter isn't coming home this weekend. They're all in lockdown. What a surprise. Never mind. Right. That's it, folks. See you next week. Bye for now.